Okay, here we go again. A little update on some projects here. This here is going to be the cart you've seen there in the drawings. This is kind of what it looks like as it comes together. Yeah, uh, got the cooling tank racks here. Got them fitted up and bolted on now. And uh, back here, let's see, we do this. Back here, we got the uh, bottle tank holder, the bottle uh, rack for that uh, argon bottle there. And then on the other side there you see uh, a little bit there them uh, four pieces of three inch schedule 40 welded together that I'm wearing the bees for rod holders so I can put my rod holders up in there and over on this side here we got the uh, lead racks and we'll uh, hold the uh, hold the leads for the welder keep them up off the ground and keep them up out of my way and then uh, there again you see the the rod holders were what I do for rod holders here is just some uh, just some PVC pipe with some caps on it and uh, one end glued on one end loose and that goes in there like that and there will be four of them once I get them made up and that's this bottle frame here uh, what I got in there for a floor is a piece of one inch fiberglass grating that uh, I had to paint it because uh, come out of a chemical plant it was kind of used and they were throwing it away but so it was a little a little ratty looking but uh, I painted it up and it actually came out pretty good it's actually pretty serviceable little, little piece there for being thrown in scrap here on the tank uh, the cooling tank mounts there's a piece of four by quarter steel welded across there and what that'll be for is I'll once I get around to it, I'll take that uh, cooling pump and get the whole pattern off it and mount that to there and uh, run the plumbing and clean up the plumbing a little bit on it and keep it up out of harm's way. And what this cart will have on it is back here on those plates down there that are welded on. You know, that'll be the uh, axle plates, I guess you call them, and I'll put some of those solid rubber wheels on there. Um, probably going to end up taking them off of that cart I built for the Hobart welder which I no longer have but uh, then will be the solid wheels and then up in front here on the front you can kind of see get the junk out of the way here you can kind of see there's a piece of 2 by 4 tubing welded up under there and what will mount there will be a swivel caster to mount to the bottom of that and keep everything leveled out and then in the front here you can see a little bit of that 4 by 2 showing through but there's a notch in there and what that notch will be is I'll weld in a piece of two inch square tubing for some kind of handle arrangement but and here's the beast that the uh, the carts being made for it's a Miller dial arc HF high frequency unit uh, as you can see it's got the cooling tank on there for the TIG uh, argon bottle for the TIG welding uh, it's as you can see it's on a cart now that's a real serviceable cart uh, it holds everything and it, it works fine. The only thing is, is uh, as you can see in my shop here, this ground isn't exactly concrete. It's a, it's called poor man's concrete and that's a ag lime or a limestone screening some people call it or fines. Um, and those little casters there that you can't even hardly see, them there don't really work too well in this soft, uh, soft ground. Then, we get out there in a the drive where it looks like there's too much light out there and you can't really see but get out there in a the drive and under that snow there there's gravel so nothing rolls good over that that welder there that, that goes about 500 pounds so I don't plan on moving it around a lot but uh, mainly probably just move it over to where it goes and hopefully it'll set there because uh, I'll have the long leads I got I got more than enough welding cable to go most anywhere I need to go around here uh, most things I can bring up here to it with a tractor so it don't have to go too far so uh, really the mobility of the car that that don't matter a whole lot uh, just so I can move it around if I have to get it out of the way to do something or other but that's a big unit it, it's heavy and boy that 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 uh, welder there that thing really does weld I tell you it it makes a big difference you get a good welder I 
and I've used a bunch of different welders and places I've worked and all that and it just seems this thing here just just makes a difference it really makes a difference in the welding and uh, it's been a really good unit I haven't tigged with it yet and I look forward to doing that but I want to get it set up because I kind of like to TIG weld but uh, for stick welding it's been it's been really great for me I, I'm burning some 6011 rod there because I had an AC welder before so I got a bunch of 6011 rod and uh, that works really good for me and I always like the 6010, 6011 rods and I picked up some 7014 the other day, uh, five pounds of it I think it is and just to try it out and it's okay I guess and it's uh, it kind of makes it pretty well but uh, I, I just always tend to go with that 6010, 6011 kind of rod because I, I like the way it runs and uh, it works pretty good for me.